Look at you. You look great. You look great, smell great, everything about you. Great, great, great. <clears throat> Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Me and uh, me and me and my pal Bats been chatting. Uh, we had, we had an <clears throat> interesting client call where uh, you know when 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 I talk with people about SQL Server, SQL Server performance. Uh, we we talk about a lot of stuff to do with queries and indexes and query plans and the way different things you do in your query and design your indexes has an effect on the query plan that you ultimately end up getting, which should also should all be at least fairly clear to uh, my distinguished audience. But, you know, uh, some people need a little bit more help and guidance than others. That, that is what I'm here for. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about a sort prize. Now, now, keep in mind, this is not like a sort prize, like, hey, you won. Congratulations. You, you, you get a thing. Here is your honorarium of some variety. This is a surprise sort, and um, we're not. This isn't going to cause a big performance issue today. This is. We're just going to look at uh, how uh, index, how like the intersection of indexes and querying, and how you can sometimes end up with a sort that you might not expect in your query plan. But before we do that, Bats would like to remind you that uh, you, you can become a loyal paying member of the channel to say thank you for all of the hard, diligent work that I do producing this content. There is a link down in the video description there where Bats is pecking away, uh, that, where, where you can, for as, as few as $4 a month, support your local SQL Server enthusiast. If uh, you have perhaps uh, engorged your Bats with, with Pez candies, you've spent all your money there, you can do other things to support the channel. You can like, you can subscribe, you can comment, and if you would like to ask me questions that uh, I will answer during my officially branded Bats Maru office hours, uh, you can go to that link, which is also in the video description. You can ask me questions that I will answer. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server beyond what you uh, can get from mere YouTube videos, uh, you can do all, you can hire me to do all sorts of things that people find useful. Bats is being a little a little cranky today. Uh, I, 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 I can do health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning of your SQL servers, uh, helping you with SQL server performance emergencies, and of course, training your developers so that you don't have those performance emergencies anymore. These are all things that, uh, according to Beer Gut Magazine, I excel far beyond anyone else in the world at, so uh, you, are, you are free to hire me to do all of these things. And you are can rest peaceably with the knowledge that you have hired a Beer Gut Magazine certified SQL Server consultant. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like to get some high quality, low cost SQL Server training from me and you old bats here, uh, you can get all 24 hours of mine to fill your brain with uh, for about 150 US dollars, and that will last for the rest of your life. All you have to do is use the coupon code right there at the link up there, which is also down in the video description. And gosh darn it, you can, you can start being as good at SQL Server as Bats Maru. Uh, SQL Saturday, New York City, 2025. That is this year. That is just a couple months away now. Uh, coming up uh, May the 10th. Uh, with a performance tuning pre-con on May the 9th. I, I highly suggest you you attend both and uh, you you hang out with me and become my best friend. Maybe maybe that maybe that'll be the start of something beautiful. Who knows? But with that out of the way, let's talk about surprise sorts because they're interesting things. Now, uh, we're going to run a, a query with a few different things going on in it, and we're going to use this query and the, the, the index that we have available, and then we're going we're gonna to show you what happens with a slightly different index. So uh, we've got right now this index up here. Zoom it would be so kind as to zoom. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've got this one here where reputation is in ascending order. Now, for those of you uh, who are new to this whole thing. Because the users table in the Stack Overflow database has a clustered, the important part here is clustered, primary key, 
on the ID column. The ID column is a hidden key column. Uh, it is a hidden key column because this is a non-unique index. You notice that there is a, a distinct lack of a word, the word unique in here. So because this is a non-unique index, uh, the ID column, if you know, Zoomit would be so kind as to erase the squares instead of just having me click buttons mindlessly, uh, the ID column is hanging over here uh, as an additional key column. If the, if the index, well, that D was a little aggressive, huh? Let's dot that I. If this were a unique index, then the, uh, the, the, the ID column would be hiding, well, somewhere in this region as an included column. Uh, but since this is a non-unique clustered index, it is an additional key column, which means that this, in, that this index is uh, sorted by the reputation column first. Right, so all of the order, all of the values for reputation are, are sorted from one to whatever John Skeet is, one million and something, and for all of the duplicates, right? Because we we we, we index all the data. So like, let's say for the million or so people who have a reputation of one, uh, the ID column is in order for that. But as soon as we go to reputation two, the ordering of ID resets, and we start and we we start from whatever whoever has the the lowest uh, ID. To the highest ID within the next range of values. So, the we have an index where reputation is in order, and an index where ID is in order within all of those ranges of reputation. So we would expect to be able to order things, uh, have an order by in the query that that helps with all sorts of stuff, helps us avoid sorting data. Now, like I said before, this isn't going to show a big performance issue. This is just going to show you some behavioral stuff. So if I select the top one thousand rows from the users table and I order by reputation descending, right? Just reputation descending on its own here. Then we get a backwards scan of this index, right? Scan direction is backwards, but we don't have to sort any data. We have a top and we have a scan. We do not have a sort operator in our query plan. SQL Server did not have to uh, uh, acquire any additional memory grant in order to put this data in the order that we have asked for it. If we run these two queries, well, the reason why we might do something like this is because the reputation column is not unique. Remember, we talked about that when we were talking about the index definition. Uh, and if we have any ties in the reputation uh, column, we might want to add a tie breaker in the form of this unique ID column to our query so that we have a way to uniquely identify the top 1,000. Right? Otherwise, if we could get like duplicate replication, sorry, duplicate reputation, not replication, uh, we could get like sort of unexpected results ordering by a non-unique column. So let's run these two queries and let's look at what happens. Now, uh, you'll notice that for the execution plan where we order by reputation descending and uh, ID ascending, we have a top end sort. In the, uh, in, the, in, the, the, in the query plan where we have reputation, so let's, just, let's put a little square around that here, make it obvious. This is reputation descending, ID ascending. In this query, we have ordered by uh, reputation descending, ID descending. So in this one, we have a top end sort. In this one, we just have a top. We are back to our original plan. Now, the reason for this is somewhat complicated, uh, or maybe not incredibly intuitive to folks out there. Uh, and let's, but let's, let's try to explain it well. If you look at the properties of this index scan, you'll notice that um, we, we do not have uh, a direction on this one, right? Uh, if you look at what happens, there's no, uh, like, we didn't have like a backward scan. If we look at this one, uh, the backwards scan will be back, right? So this one has the backwards property. This one is an uh, unordered, unordered scan of the table. That's why we have to sort this over here. And of course, the sort operation is ordering by reputation descending and ID ascending. So the question is, why when we sort by reputation descending and ID ascending, uh, do we need to sort the data? But when we sort by reputation descending and ID descending, we do not need to do that. 
Well, the, what, what it really comes down to, and if we look at the results over here, it might be a little bit more obvious. I do have to do a little bit of surgery on this to get both of these query panes to the right place. And of course, we need to get to around row 276 for this to be incredibly obvious or for this to start to become obvious. So let's look at both of those. Oh, come on, SSMS, you're really making a fool out of me here. So 276 or so has uh, the first duplicate that I could find in the results. Uh, yes, I did scroll through and look for them. So uh, we have the reputation 160303 here, right? And that's, that's the same for both of these. But you'll notice that the order of the IDs is slightly different for them. In the, in the, in the top query where we're ordering by ID ascending, we have... 19679 first and then 206403 second. In the bottom query for 160303, we have ID in descending order. So we have 206403 first and 19679 second, right? So clearly those two values flipped. Now think about the way to think about why we need to sort the data in the top plan but not in the second plan does come back to the execution plan. So again, the, the, the properties of the scan with the sort does not have a direction on it, right? There is no order, uh, when we look at the ordered attribute, it says false. So we just read through stuff and found it. The reason for that is because imagine that you are the, imagine that you are the SQL Server engine, right? Uh, and you are reading through the index over here backwards. Right, so you're reading, you're you're doing a backward scan. So let's just pretend that like like this is our B tree, and over here is the like ascending end of our B tree, and over here is the descending end of our B tree. So the backward scan starts over here and starts reading things this way, right? So we'd be reading through this index in descending order, and then all of a sudden we would get to like we'd be like you know we're ordering by reputation descending or reading through the index in descending order and we're trying to like you know we want to order by id ascending we would get to that like 160303 reputation and then we would have to like like brrr, like do a u-turn and be like no now we need to sort this way so sql server like like it can't really do that like that's not really how b trees work we can't just like start sort like reading the index and then like backwards order this way and then be like ah but then order the other column this way like 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 sql server is not like an advanced enough um product or rather doesn't have that advancement in the product in order to do that uh so in the second query where we we are we just we can just straight up backward scan the whole thing id is already going to be like we're reading through the index backwards, so ID the ID the order of the IDs is also going to be backwards, reading through that. So as we're reading through the descending order reputations, ID is also going to be in descending order. So it's a, so a SQL Server can just chug along that and have all the data straight in the order that it wants for both of those. So that's why we don't need to sort there. Of course, you can write a query that would do that for you, uh, if you were to uh, break things up a little bit and do some manual phase separation, as, as the smart folks out there say. And we were, we were to get the top thousand reputation ordered by reputation descending in an inner query, and then join, remember, we, we, we have to get, like we're doing the group by here, so we get a unique set of reputations back. And then out here, we join back to the users on that reputation. Then we can get the data that we want in the order that we want without sorting it. Right? And the reason for that is because we hit that index twice. All right? Look at that. We scan into uh, the index over here and we seek into the index here. When we scan the index here, we are doing that we are back to doing a backward scan. So we're reading the data from over here this way rather than over here this way, from largest to smallest rather than smallest to largest. And so we do the backward scan here. We produce the top thousand rows, and then this index seek is going forward. So we're reading through this index, we're, we're joining on reputation, the, we start with the lowest reputation that came out of there, and we move to the highest reputation that came out of there. So we're in forward order on this one. And we can, uh, we can avoid having to sort data at all in this query plan, because we have 
two separate reads of the index that happen in two separate directions. SQL Server could do this for us if it felt like doing a bunch of extra work in the query plan, but I understand a bit why it doesn't. Now, of course, if we really cared about, um, uh, like, like we really wanted an index to do that for us, we could create this index because this would be reputation descending and ID ascending. So what we would have here is an index that you don't need to read backwards in order to get data from this end to this end because we have the highest stuff over here and reputation is going to be in ascending order from there. So we can get this plan over here without a sort now. So depending on how you need to return data with your queries, you might need to think about how you create your indexes and which direction you store your data in because sometimes if you need to mix sort like sort orders like this like reputation descending id ascending you might need to change the way that your indexes are set up or write really much more complicated queries in order to in order to avoid having to sort data now of course like the the client issue that i was dealing with was a big sort and it was taking up a lot of memory and it wasn't using a lot of that memory it's getting a very big memory grant not really using it and so we had to think of some clever ways around uh, that problem. And that is what brings us here today is solving problems in clever ways. Um, you know, we could like, it, like we, we could do the query rewrite and leave the indexing alone, or we could change the index, right? So like we have choices as far as making things work. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something about, well, either indexes or forward scans or backward scans or some kind of scans. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of scanning going on in here. Anyway, maybe that's maybe that's my problem. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you in uh, another video another time. Toodle.